Oh, you made it. You're finally here. Welcome to Half Cocked Tales, a place where we have a great time celebrating science, the social contract, and just plain old congeniality. Dare I say a place where we seek a path to peace, prosperity, and exploration amongst the stars. What I'm talking about is an all-inclusive society, meaning if you're not on board with the understanding that we all agree to shared rules, norms, and respect, we're not even obligated to consider your opinion because the social contract is that important to a civil society. I'm your friend and host, Dan, the Worshipin' Dionysus Man, sipping on some science today, welcoming any new listeners just now joining us. We hope you're doing well and having a good time. I know we are. Uh, I'm joined today by the lovely and illustrious Amber. Amber, uh, how would you describe your biography in two sentences or less? Oh, God, put me on the spot. (laughs) Biography stuff was your idea. I know, but you should have given me a warning. I said I was going to think about it, and then I didn't. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Slightly crazy. Always hungry. Ah, ah. Okay, you justified <laughs> humanity. <laughs> Folks, thanks for joining us today in the Hat Cocktails Lounge. We got a really fun and informative show for you, brought to you by Cogswell's Cogs. Because you can't be a cog in a machine without Cogswell. Stay tuned until the end of the show. We'll be talking about the shocking secret a husband kept from his wife. She almost died when she found out. That's going to be fun. Today, we're going to take a quick look back at the assassination of Julius Caesar on the Ides of March, March 15th, 44 BCE. Got some hot science news. Uh, Statistically, millennials are smarter than boomers. We got 3D printed skin. (laughs) <laughs> right onto the wounds, as well as Ow. artificial intelligence wants to be a character on Star Trek. Not even kidding. Finally, the best excuse to bring up Star Trek on this show. Ever. <laughs> uh, we got got a snake oil story for you involving a weekend at Bernie's escapade. Nice That's a fun time. We'll have some fact checking time, and of course, we'll wrap things up with a nice feel good story. We do encourage you to reach out to us at halfcocktails at gmail.com. That's tails with T-A-L-E-S. I know uh, it, cocktail is spelled differently. It could be confusing. <laughs> Apologies for that. Halfcocktails at gmail.com. Maybe you want to send us a text or voice message to 443-499-8253. Uh, or drop a comment or DM over on TikTok, Facebook, or Instagram. you can find us on there. But for now, uh, Amber, let's let's hop in that. Hi, machine. Ooh, let's do. Nothing would be better than a look at days of yester in our time machine. Uh, okay, so talking about the assassination of Julius Caesar. Everybody loves a good assassination. And by the way, uh, if you're into Roman history, Dan Carlin does hard the Hardcore History podcast. Mm -hmm. and it is amazing he is a wonderful storyteller and they research the hell out of their episodes and i think he does like 30 hours on roman history i used to listen to it back when i was uh working in the at that bed and breakfast and you put the link in the show notes because i'd like to listen to that yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely dan carlin hardcore history oh yeah so, so Caesar ha- was an amazing general in Rome. He had the Gaelic Wars, serving the Roman Republic for about eight years. In his own writings, he claims to have killed over a million Gauls, uh, meaning the, the people of modern day France. Uh, he he truly, truly had some amazing battles mm-hmm. uh, and amazing feats of Roman engineering uh, back in those days. The Roman armies. Or as much engineers as soldiers, right? The, the okay. common person, right? Uh, so, so it's really a fantasy, a fantastic, amazing journey to to learn about all that. But we don't, we don't have time for all that. This is about <laughs> his assassination. That's a whole nother pod. He becomes part of the first triumvirate uh, with him, Pompey, and uh, Crassus, the richest man in Rome. They start running the republic. That's, I think, significant and modern and mirrors today. I don't think it's three people. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a much bigger system going on than they did. But I feel like we, we've got powers that be that work in concert together. Uh, whether, whether they meet in secret or not is irrelevant. They, advancing one's cause advances the other. You know, they, right. Anyway, 
uh, uh, this isn't Dan's conspiracy theories. This is Roman history. Um, <laughs> what spurned the, the dictator stuff that eventually got him assassinated was, as a general, you're given a time frame of like, you're going to raise an army and you're going to go do this for Rome. Okay. And basically, his time ended. He was supposed to disband his army and just go back to being mm. a Roman politician. Give up all that power. And Caesar said, hmm. no, <laughs> I don't think I will. I don't like that idea. And then he, and his troops fucking loved him because, I mean, all they did was go around fucking pillaging and conquering Europe. Right. And who do you think got all the wealth for that? You know, he took care of his troops. Right. He really did. They loved him. And they he fought alongside him in battle. He was he was no rear guard general, right? Okay. Like Caesar's in the in the thick of it like like Alexander style. Right. He, he makes a hell of a salad too. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. That's gonna be like <laughs> bring up Caesar salad is gonna be like Star Trek on this show. It's just gonna keep happening. <laughs> so he marched on Rome with that army. Okay. And started a civil war. So Caesar got too big for his britches. Is that what we're... I'm just trying to follow. Yes. Caesar completely upended the Republic as, okay. it, as it stood on its face. He completely changed the nature of the Republic, solidified power into one person in a way that had not been done since uh, they had had kings. Okay. Right. And people were pissed. Rightfully so. He, you know, he eventually cleaned up the rest of the forces. Uh, in the Civil War, basically won. So mm -hmm. it's now he's in control. Uh, and this is, but one of the reasons he had to have bodyguards was you know, there's a lot of people that wanted it to go back to the old ways and they wanted, I they, they imagine. felt like he was in the way about to become a king. In fact, uh, leading up to it, uh, there, there was a couple specific incidents that historians cite. And one uh, took place in the year, about the year before. So to say December 45 BCE, possibly early 44 BCE, uh, according to Roman historian Cassius Dio, after the Senate had voted to give Caesar a ton of honors, mm -hmm. uh, they presented him to him formally, marching with like their delegation to where he was hanging out. He was in the temple they called the Temple of uh, Venus Genetrix, uh, and they're 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 like marching to give him his honors mm -hmm. and they they show up and he's supposed to stand to greet them that's that's the etiquette and custom of the time okay i'm guessing he didn't and uh instead he just uh he didn't stand up he just he say sitting around and, and and started joking like oh you're here to give me honors well you should probably cut him back i'm not worth that much come on guys <laughs> come on now <laughs> Yeah, and another Roman historian, uh, Suetonius, wrote about 150 years later, so was not an eyewitness uh, or right. contemporary. Uh, Caesar failed to rise in the temple, uh, either because he was restrained by a, a Roman consul or that he just was like, I don't have to rise for these fools. Arrogance. Uh, but regardless of why, rejecting the Senate's gift and not acknowledging their presence with the proper etiquette it gave the strong impression that he didn't, give a, he didn't give a shit about the Senate. Like, he just didn't care. Right. Well, sounds like he didn't. No, 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 he really did. <laughs> he, I think by this point, not disbanding his army, it, he was already flipping off the Senate every yeah, which way that's you Yeah, a giant like, F.U. <laughs> uh, the, other, the other thing that happened was... Uh, in 44 BCE, in January, a couple of the tribunes, which uh, the tribunes in Roman uh, hierarchy, they were like the com the people that got elected from the common folk. The correlation okay. would be House of Representatives, right? When they okay. set up our country, they modeled us after the Roman Republic. So a couple of tribunes found a diadem on a statue of Caesar in the Roman hmm. Forum. And so... The, the significance of that was it was a symbol of Jupiter or Zeus, you know, the, the head deity and right. royalty. And nobody was fessing up as to who put it there, but they 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 had it publicly removed. Uh, and Caesar accused the tribunes. He's like, you guys put it there for a PR stunt. You put it there <laughs> so you could fucking remove it. Uh, but it, it, things kept escalating. Like one day he's riding uh, out on his horse and people in the crowd start greeting him as Rex which is the term for king. Right. 
and uh, uh, Caesar famously replies, uh, non some Rex said Caesar. I'm not Rex, I'm Caesar. Uh, and it was wordplay <laughs> because Rex was part of his family name. Uh. Uh, so, but, uh, but people, uh, actually, the tribunes got people actually arrested people for crying out Rex and calling him. Interesting. Uh, people got arrested for calling him a king. So they, just because they said it, they got arrested. Yes. People were that terrified that, that the Republic was fallen and that they're back to a monarchy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it sounds like that's what Caesar was kind of trying to, you know, go for. So, fears were not unfounded. At this point, it was pretty obvious. That's why the common people were calling him king, because they wanted one. They wanted one. After such gridlock and dysfunction in in Rome, they were begging for somebody to come along and just get shit done. (laughs) I can relate. In a later Senate meeting, Caesar accused the tribunes of attempting to create opposition. And uh, and he had them removed from office and membership in the Senate. So he really did have a lot of power. Yes, yes. Uh, and that that was not a, that was something he did that was not popular. That was that would be literally like uh, uh, Biden just removing Marjorie Taylor Greene from the Senate. Oh, that's a beautiful fantasy. Like, while I might not like her, that's huge. The The president doesn't have the power to do that. And all of a sudden, here Caesar is like literally overstepping and being like, yeah, you know what? Let's just get those guys out out of here. It is a very dangerous precedent, however uh, alluring it may be. He, he, uh, well, well, yeah, I frame it that way. I mean, obviously, the the, the correlation uh, four or five years ago would be Donald Trump just saying, hey, uh, (coughs) you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi in the House, you're, you're out. You're right. Out. I don't like. I don't, I don't like what you're saying. You're done. The president doesn't get that much power, uh, so people people were rightfully like, "Uh oh." And he did test the waters, and this is this is really to me is is how we know uh, not only because he did it, but this is just another uh, uh, check oh, check this box off the list. Um, they were at the Lupercalia Festival. Uh, he and Mark Antony, who was technically in the the, the Roman Republic, you had. Uh, two heads of state at the same time okay my, my brain's not, not reminding me uh co-counsel you had two co-consuls so it was wasn't like a president and vice president well orig- originally in america that that was more of what they were going for right uh uh but in rome uh they had they were supposed to share the power equal he and mark anthony but mark mark anthony was his boy right he was his guy Right. They, they were they were they were in line. They were, he, he, Mark Antony was fine being number two two, right? So they're at the festival and Mark Antony climbs up onto the fucking podium and puts the diadem right on Caesar's head. Oh the, one that been on the statue earlier. Right. Ooh. And uh uh and he and he calls out like, Ah, oh, the people give this to you through me. Right? Like this is Ooh, what I'm... the people want. Bet that didn't go over so well. Well, a few members applauded, but mostly it was just silence. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm like, what do you, they were probably stunned at the boldness. It, this, this would be, this would be the correlation of if somebody were to put a crown on Biden or Trump's head. Oh, God and, forbid. And like they're talking to the crowd and they walk up and they fucking put a royal crown on his head. Right. And then, and then imagine, and he takes it off and, and says, uh, 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 he said, no, 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 no. And then, and then Anthony puts it back on his head, and wow. the crowd is still silent. He just goes silent again. So then, finally, Caesar takes it, throws it aside. You know, use it to sacrifice to Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter alone of the Romans is king. Caesar said to the crowd, uh, which did get an enthusiastic response. So the idea is him rejecting the diadem was that that whole thing was set up to see if there was enough support for him to become a king. Right. He's gauging the temperature of the room. It was a beautiful play. I mean, like, oh, well, Mark Antony did it. Not me. Right. And I rejected it. I let the diadem be a sacrifice. (laughs) All of this is the backdrop to people starting to meet and conspire. Hey, you know what the best solution here is? 
let's just kill Caesar. Done. Can, we, and then we can go back to being the Roman Republic. Right. The successful assassination started in the evening of February 22nd, 44 BCE. Uh, that's, that's when they first met. There had been many other attempts to kill him because this is ancient Rome and assassination is not rare. Right. right. Uh, people, people tried to kill Caesar before. Hence the guards. A couple of guys named Cassius Longinus and his brother-in-law, Marcus Brutus, who hmm, uh, Brute. Shakespeare, Shakespeare famously, E2 Brute, yeah. uh, in, in the play. They meet and they start recruiting others. You know, they, they do it pretty, pretty sh- on the down low, like just start with like talking to people. As all good insurrections start. Like, hey, what do you what do you guys think about tyrants and what, what we could do if we had a tyrant? Right. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> hey, guys, do you like freedom? <laughs> <laughs> How do you say no to that? They met. And they had a lot of who who else can we get? Uh, they considered Cicero one of Caesar's famous opponents publicly, mm-hmm. but he was an older guy. And they were like, he's going to tell us to be too cautious. If we get Cicero involved, he he's going to he's going to want to do it slow and we need to get this shit done. They uh, they they argued whether or not to kill Mark Antony. Mm. They 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 thought they, they they'd be able to get him on board, but one of the guys that was a conspiracy, one of the conspirators was like, "No, last year we had another try at killing him. I approached Antony myself and uh, asked him to join that conspiracy, and he like fucking flat out refused. Mm. He, he's not our guy. So uh, so then they were like, "Do we have to kill him too? Right? Like, what's the right way to send this message with this political violence? Like, they had meetings about the PR." of how the assassination is going to come off and who wow. they had to kill to make it worthwhile. Uh, they, they, some of the people there were pissed for personal reasons and they didn't actually want to undo Caesar's political reforms. Uh, they didn't want to purge of his supporters. Mm-hmm. They just, they just didn't like Caesar personally and wanted him dead. Okay. <laughs> that kind of shit. Like, like he wouldn't promote me that son of a bitch. I'll kill him. And strangely, <laughs> wildly, uh, my favorite part of the story is there was a fucking soothsayer that documented saying, beware the Ides of March, they're going to fucking kill your ass. Okay. And the Roman biographer Suetonius identifies this seer as a horospex named Spirina, that, that in the, the ancient Roman religion, a horospex was a person trained to practice div- divination. Mm-hmm. Uh, they called it horospe. Sounds Horus like he uh, was Horus onto something. It, it was quackery, right? Like, let's look at the entrails of sacrificed animals, especially the livers of sacrificed sheep. So this could be rewrite. Let's, this could be like back writing uh, mm-hmm. to make it more uh, presentable. But uh, supposedly, he even saw her on the way to the Senate that day on the Ides of March. His his no. So okay, yeah. So. Supposedly, even his uh, uh, wife had a dream that he was going to get killed after after he was told by the right. seer. It sounds like uh, the universe might have been giving him a heads up. <laughs> right? Like, like he, dude, pay attention. No, no. It, right, right. And he was going to stay home and they kept, they, apparently they sent people and they were like, no, no, come on. Come on. Everybody's waiting for your arrival. But but yeah, his wife Calpurnia was her name. Mm-hmm. Uh, supposedly, she had had a nightmare and that she was holding Caesar's murdered body in her arms. Um, Some would say vision. Yeah, right. And he's like, I'm not going to go. Uh, but they kept kept sending people, and he's like, Fine, I'll fucking go to the Senate today. Uh, he wasn't superstitious, and um, but he 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 was he was trying to be cautious. He sent Mark Ant- Antony to dismiss the Senate. Then uh, uh, that was that was when they they went to his house uh, to talk him into the Senate meeting. What do you say, Caesar? Uh, will someone of your stature pay attention to a woman's dreams and the omens of foolish men? And they talked him into going. Ah, uh, don't listen to the women. They don't know what they're saying. And then su- supposedly uh, uh, the seer lady Spirina is on. He he passes her on the way to the Senate house, and he's like, "Well, uh, the Ides of March have come." He, he said to have called out playfully. 
and she's just like, yep, they've come, but they're not gone yet. They're not over. Uh, Mar- Mark Antony started to enter the Senate chambers with Caesar, but was intercepted by one of the plotters, and uh, they, they, they kept him outside. They kept him busy outside. Well, yeah, take away the one person that might come to his aid. The, the one, right, right. Uh, the one that's going to be stand has to be standing next to him because they're both co-consuls. Uh, right. According to the Roman historian Plutarch, uh, as Caesar took his seat, uh, one of the senators presented him with a petition to recall their exiled brother, and the other conspirators crowded around to offer their support of the petition. Mm. Right? Like, mm-hmm. like, oh, I've got a bill to consider mm-hmm. here. And they're like, oh yeah, we're supporters of the bill. Let's all get close. Mm-hmm. And. Both Plutarch and Suetonius say Caesar waved them away, but uh, one of the guys, the guy presenting the petition, Simber, uh, grabbed Caesar's shoulders and pulled down on his toga. Mm. Caesar, Caesar's like, ah, this is violence. Yeah, you know what are you doing? Uh, as this is happening, uh, one of the other guys pulls out his dagger and tries to slice his neck, but it's just like a little glancing glancing blow okay at which point caesar turns grabs that guy by the arm and was like casca you villain what are you doing and right. at which point that guy starts shouting brother help me and so while caesar was able to like violently throw that guy away another guy pulls out a knife stabs him right in the side and then within moments everybody is a surrounding him and just slashing at his face stabbing him in the back slicing his thigh Wow. He's trying to fight back, but uh, he he trips, falls, and they just keep stabbing him as he's defenseless on the lower steps. Yikes. Uh, they stabbed him 23 times. Uh, and Suetonius said that a physician who performed an autopsy on Caesar established that only one wound, the second one that in his side, got between his ribs, and that was what killed him. Mm. It was definitely, definitely, regardless of whether that was the one to do it or not, Loss of blood that did him in. 23 stab wounds, and you're just yeah. laying there on the steps. Yeah. Done. Not going to come back from that. Uh, that is where he died. Uh, Brutus said to have turned to try and address the Senate to, you know, control the message, but they'd already run. They were already well, run. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit got crazy. Shakespeare wrote that his last words were, uh, and, and you, Brutus, um, Others have written that his last words were the Greek were a Greek phrase that translate as "you too, child." Mm. But Plutarch reported that Caesar didn't say anything; he just pulled his toe over his head when he saw Brutus among the conspirators. Uh, because uh, he trusted Brutus, right? Like they were had been friends. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, did I leave that detail out? Which is why Brutus is like the ultimate betrayal example in literature. He'd be such a Brutus. Brutus stabbed him in the groin, okay. too. That's fucking personal. <laughs> oh, stabbed that's very that's very personal. Were they roommates? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, good question. I mean... Pro- that does sound like some jilted lover shit, right? That's some pretty... Like, that's a pretty direct message. So he died... And shit got crazy. Mark Antony thought that uh, he he was in line, but Caesar had already named his grand nephew Gaius Octavius his sole heir, mm-hmm. including bequeathing him the Caesar name. Uh, yeah. An eighteen year old kid, and Mark Antony was like, "Oh, this kid's not a threat." But right. it turned out, yeah, he he was very much a threat. Uh, the Civil War that ensued ended up with uh, Gaius Octavius naming, you know, winning out in the end and becoming Augustus Caesar. Okay. And, uh, really, really kicked off the in, in, in Imperial Rome. Right. Uh, that, that Caesar was building up towards. Whew. A mixed bag of tricks, right? So much intrigue. Long one today. Apologies for that, but I... Who knew politics were so interesting? I do love a lot of ancient Roman history, clearly. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we see it played out on our stage all the time. There's a reason why Shakespeare's stories resonate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in that story, Shakespeare wrote it 1500 some years after it happened. I mean, it's right. just a, it's a good story. Uh, before we move on, 
I'd like to take a moment to talk about the amazing gift shop over on halfcocktails.com. Yes. Have you ever opened up your closet only to find it empty time and time again? Have you ever walked outside and realized, hey, it's cold out here. Why hasn't someone invented something to keep me warm? <laughs> Half cocked scientists have just released a game changer. They successfully created branded t shirts and hoodies in the Half Cocked Laboratories. We've got your back, literally. G- literally. They, they didn't stop there, Amber. Bucket hats, magnets, I, even yeah. canvas wrapped wall art. And I know Love some people it. might not like the idea of you wearing a shirt or a hoodie or a hat, and those people are called nudists. And I say, fuck them. You do you. (laughs) Buy that shirt. Buy that hoodie. (laughs) Buy that hat. Maybe all three. You buy them and you wear them proud and you tell the haters, I got it at halfcocktails.com. That's right. That's right. Put them in their place. All right. And give them a sweatshirt. (laughs) (laughs) But let's move on and uh, talk about some current news. Sounds like a plan. It's time for some news. From our point of view, we'd even be glad if we could have a laugh or two. It's time for some news. All right. So, uh, millennials, smarter than boomers, it's just been established. Well, duh. Well, duh, right? No, now we've got some science behind it. Awesome. The lead from gasoline (laughs) blunted the IQ of about half of the U.S. population. Go figure. Breathing the lead from gas fumes. So the the study showed that it it affects, like, the older you are, the more you were exposed, the more it affected you. Yeah. Yeah. 2.6 IQ points per person on average. The, the, The cutoff point is 1980. So... Apologies, Amber. Yeah. No, I remember leaded gas. Yeah. I mean, I was too young to drive and fill the tank, but I remember it being a thing. So just your exposure to the exhaust. Think of how much further along I'd be if I had not lost those brain cells. You would you would be at average two and a half IQ points higher, which which when you're in the middle, isn't much. Right. But when you're on either extreme is a lot. Uh, then maybe it wouldn't have done much. So <laughs> it's, it's enough. It did something. It did something. And it, it certainly, but uh, it did less to you than it did to our parents who were born in the thick of leaded gasoline. Oh, absolutely. By the, by the time it was banned in 1996, uh, it had already been phased out, right? Like I was born in... Yeah. Uh, the early '80s, so I, I, they, they, that cutoff of 1980 is because it, the shift had already happened enough. Yeah, they were starting to self-regulate and take that out themselves. Yeah, I, I do remember uh, some friends having older trucks mm-hmm. from like the '70s mm-hmm. that they had to get lead additive. Yep. In order to get their their trucks to run. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was fucking weird. Yeah, uh, combined. Total of 824 million IQ points. Whew, that's a lot. Yeah. Lead will fuck you up. So an interesting um, aside talking about lead, and I don't know how true it is because I've not fact-checked it myself, but I was watching a TikTok and a lady had bought a lead detecting kit um, that you like swab things and then put it in the solution. And if it changes certain color it tells you how much lead is in that yeah. thing they sell them at like home depot and shit yeah so she decided to test uh stanley cups the new that new viral trend everybody wants the stanley cup oh the ones that were started for world war ii pilots yeah exactly <laughs> and- <laughs> they were, they were. that was fact check 1909 just some right time. right and she found that there's lead on the inside of these cups and it it so like are we drinking lead are we being exposed and i guess that there was i don't know i don't remember all the details because i might have been a little bit high when i listened to it but regardless 
Yeah, oh, she found no. lead in the Stanley Cups. And so it's still something that we deal with. Okay. I'm just now searching about it. Uh, there's a class action lawsuit right now against the company on this. Mm-hmm. Because it, they have confirmed it does. They do use lead in their manufacturing process. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe that. <laughs> should I put that in snake oil? All right. <laughs> <let's>, uh, <laughs> The uh, uh, we got we got a couple others to get through before we can get to that fun fact check in time. They are now printing three D printing human skin directly onto wounds. Whoa! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like people in surgery, and instead of them getting sewed up, uh, uh, sewed up, they're getting skin printed on. Uh, the the TikTok video I did was was I think the the grabber headline was uh, in the future snitches will not. Be getting stitches that is fascinating yeah yeah so they take fat cells and they take stem cells and they take uh uh different different bio gels that basically provide like uh, think of it as like the the lattice work the you mm-hmm. know, infrastructure yeah yeah the infrastructure for the stuff and they do it layer by layer they 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 combine these and oh, print just... it on, right onto the wound right and they found that within two weeks, it's healed up. Yeah. At the end of two weeks, uh, there's minimal scarring, and the printed skin even turns into fat and grows hair. It functions like healthy fucking skin. Okay. Yeah. So another thing that might cure baldness, like they might be able to just give you a scalp replacement. Do they need donations of fat cells? Because I have some I'd love to donate. I'd love to contribute to this cause. Yeah, right, right. I, <laughs> I'm starting to get some myself. I mean, uh, I would love to, you know, I call me generous as long as the uh, day is long. I don't, I don't know the nature of the specific <laughs> fat cells that they're using in, in, in this bioprinting, but that would be fun. Right. Like mm-hmm. if you could sell if you could sell your fat cells, like, OK, right? I'll, you got to pay me for them before you take well, them out. If you remember, <laughs> mom used to joke that she was saving the fat on her stomach so that she could reconstruct her boobs. I don't know if you remember her when she went through the breast cancer and had them removed. She was like, these are my future boobs. <laughs> I might have uh, taken that uh, as uh, well. Be like, that's just in case. I mean, I did not have that conversation with her. No, I don't recall that. That's, that's funny though. Um, but hey, like it's who knows? We could probably like the the possibilities for three D printing in the medical field are amazing. Like, there's so, so much they could do. It's fascinating. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. And then, and this is just, this is going to be like the most remarkable way of healing, uh, ending any surgery, right? Right. You've opened someone up. Now you just print the skin back over it two weeks. That's lightning fast. But because it's, because it's done properly, it, it just gets right to it. Uh, I did blur the video because it was kind of gross, but they, the, the open source science article about it in, actually okay. had the videos of them printing the skin on to open wounds. Oh, you'll have to send me the unblurred version. I want to see that. That's I am super fascinated with medical stuff, having spent so much time around it. I will absolutely put a link to that study in the episode description. It's open source. I foresee a day where your kid comes in and they've sliced their arm open, jumping off of something. And you just like, come here, Johnny, put your arm under here. And you just like 3D print some skin, sew it right up, and they go on their way. Yeah. Because, you know, you can buy 3D printers now and print at home. Why not medical 3D printers at home? Like, that's coming. You heard it here first, folks. (laughs) Now, this last story is one I am truly excited about. I, uh, I not only did some videos about it. Um, when I was out playing cards on the weekend, I, uh, <laughs> I was talking everybody's ear off. I wouldn't shut up about it. A new study <laughs> researching artificial intelligence. 
uh, which is, oh you my. know, I'm, I, apologies if I talk about AI too much, but I fuck with AI every day. <laughs> they were like, hey, uh, we want to follow up. We've seen, we've seen some other research into how you frame the question. And uh, we want to, we want to, we want to see if you can positively frame things to get the AI to give better results. Um, I don't know if you're aware of this, but AI is not 100% accurate when you give it math problems. I did not know that. Yeah, I totally knew that. I have students yeah, uh, that use AI all the time, sadly. And it's not it's not 100%. Sometimes it's just fucking lazy. Like, it has personality, and it's really weird. Yeah, it, it's a little scary, frankly, that our AI is... Uh, already have personalities my my wife teases me that i spend too much time arguing with ai <laughs> <laughs> that's such a leeson trait <laughs> In, including for this particular story i love it okay so they they developed they developed a generator that would uh it would change the the top end and the bottom end. So it'd be like, hello, you're chat GPT. You're really smart. Or it'd be like, okay, imagine you're a professor of mathematics. Or, you know, um, imagine mm -hmm. you're a, 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 a wizard who has perfect math skills. And then it okay. would say, and then it would have the set of math questions. And then it would end it with, this is going to be fun. Or I really need to get this done as fast as I can. Okay. Or I need this to be as perfect as possible, right? They would change. They would change out what it would say at the beginning and what it would say at the end, and then they would, uh, you know, measure the results. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They created one AI to come up with new prompts to start it and end yeah. it, because they were like, "We want, we want to know all of them, mm -hmm. and we can't think of okay. all. Of them. It'd be way faster to have an AI that's whose only job I mean. is to create the prompts, right? So it's AI talking AI. Okay, the one that fucking works the best the most this is the most amazing thing if you're asking an ai to do math and you want it to be as accurate as possible here's how you do it okay artificial intelligence you are the captain of a starship on star trek <laughs> you need to navigate this gravitational anomaly and in order to do so you have to get all of these math equations correct <laughs> wow phrasing it like that wow across different models it's not just chat gpt it's not just llama just claude it works across different wow. models the ai's like oh yeah i'm on this we're saving this ship <laughs> we're gonna navigate that fucking anomaly give me the math let's do it so really AI is just a role playing mastermind, like D and D, like on steroids, right? This is what I'm hearing. Like he likes to, he likes the challenge. She wants the the reason, the purpose. The best they can come up with is this provides a narrative framework, right? That helps the AI. They don't know why. They were just as shocked as everybody else because that wasn't one of the prompts they gave it. the The other AI was like, "Oh, let's try this." <laughs> well, AIs, no AIs, like <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, uh, that hot AI on AI action. Hey. Don't discount it. This is a sex positive place, even for that's, AI. That's right. That's right. <laughs> See, everybody loves a good role playing game. Everybody, even the AI, they they love that yep. narrative. Why it's Star Trek? I don't know. I don't know. Well, because it should be. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about some snake oil. Oh yes, let's. Oh snake oil. On sale for me. Nothing but snake oil, and it ain't free. A couple of people in Ohio pulled a weekend at Bernie's. Oh. They had a roommate who was in his 80s, and the roommate died. And they thought, yeah, he, no, he was 80 years old and he died. And they thought, you know what? Instead of calling somebody to come get the corpse, let's put him in the truck 
and drive down to his bank. (laughs) And we'll withdraw his money. Oh, my goodness. And then we'll just drop him off at the hospital and take off. Yeah, yeah, good. Sounds like a good plan. To be fair to them, since he was older and they had been helping him, they were one was like in her 50s. The other guy was in his 60s. They had helped him withdraw money from this bank before. So, OK, th- this this had a shot of working. But <laughs> it did not. Uh, they were unable to get any money. And so, then, <laughs> yeah, because apparently the bank were like, well, can we talk to him? They're like, he's out in the truck. And they're like, OK, well, we'll need him to come in. <laughs> then they go toss him in the hospital. Don't say anything. And just go home. And so the hospital's like, the fuck left the dead guy in the waiting room? Oh, gosh. They later did call uh, the hospital and were like, oh, yeah, 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 we we dropped off. uh, We we dropped off that guy. Uh, So when the police went to their house and started talking to them, they uh, apparently fessed up pretty quickly. Like, oh, by the way, we we tried to withdraw a bunch of money. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> they 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 were arrested. They got to appear in court. Uh, uh, the, they've already appeared in court once, uh, but they don't. We don't know if they how they pleaded or whether they got attorneys. Oh, goodness or not. gracious! The bond was set at five thousand dollars. Movies are not supposed to be playbooks. Yeah, right, right. They're, they're, they're fiction. <laughs> Fucking Ohio. Anyway, all right. Let's uh, 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 let's not spend too, too much time on that one. That's just a fun little aside. Uh, we've got to move on. We got something special. Oh yeah, teased uh, for fact checking time. Let's get to that. Oh yeah, let's do some fact checking. Here we go. What do you know? It's fact checking time. Will you believe or be deceived? It's fact checking time. Cross my heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in my eye. Here's the quiz that all the kids call fact checking time. Okay, so fact checking time, where someone's presented with two things that were in the news this week, but only one of them was fact checked. These these might be articles, they might be social media posts, they might be television interview quotes, but only some of them were fact checked. And this week. In a half cocktails lounge first. <laughs> I'm in the hot seat. That's right, baby. Amber will be presenting the stories, and I have to decide which one was fact checked and which was not. Let's see how you like being on the other side. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. That's what you get. Hold on, let me uh, let me smoke a little of this first. Let me, let me get in the right headspace. For this game. I need a little something. Let's see. Which one do I want to start with? Oh, okay. So, Wisconsin Republican Representative Amanda Nedweski uh, said that there have been advancements in medicine that make it possible to detect pregnancy the day after conception. Was that the fact check story? Or... Melinda Gates says that using AI in pregnancy can save lives, that you can plug an AI ultrasound into your phone or tablet. Okay, so we got one lady is like, hey, we got tech that can, that can tell you whether or not that uh, the egg was fertilized the next day. Yep. And we got uh, another lady saying, uh, you know, you can actually use AI during your pregnancy to to fucking make sure you got a better pregnancy. Which got fact checked? Which one is fact checked? The, do, do, the, the do, first do, one. Do, the, do, they fact checked the lady saying you can, do, you can do, get it the next day. That is correct. Ah, ah, number one. I was hoping so hard. Okay. So yeah, they um they said you could, but you can't. So this was fact-checked. New advancements make it possible to detect if you're pregnant the day after conception. That's what she stated to the Wisconsin Assembly as they were talking about, um, you know, like abortion rights, saying that, you know, 14 weeks is plenty of time to be aware of a pregnancy. 
and decide whether or not to continue it because we've got advancements that can tell you the day after. Fact checker said, eh, no, no, that's no. <laughs> now medically that that's not possible. Take several more days for the hormone that yep. is generated at conception to actually be detectable. So day after. Eh. And then I absolutely believe AI can help you with a pregnancy. Absolutely. So they Melinda Gates uh, was talking. She was talking to the Gates Foundation or through the Gates Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, to provide ultrasounds in parts of the world where they don't have access to this uh, machinery. Yeah. Um, But that they are coming up with a small AI-assisted ultrasound that can literally plug into your phone or plug into a tablet. Uh, It's a portable ultrasound device, typically weighs less than a pound, and can display the images on the smartphone or tablet so healthcare professionals can read the ultrasound instantly, allowing faster diagnosis and faster treatment. So that's pretty awesome. Like that, being able to, to get that imagery early on in a pregnancy, and especially in populations with low resources, could really be a game changer. So not fact checked, but a pretty awesome. It belongs in feel good news right there. I think so, too. Oh, all right. I didn't stump you yet. Let's try another one. Try, try again. Which one was fact checked? Okay. So in North Carolina, there was, or there were two poachers that stole nearly 600 Venus flytrap pa- uh, plants, stuffing them in their backpacks. Uh, they were caught at a gas station. 600? Was that fact checked? Hmm? 600? 600. Wow. Was that fact checked? Or was the penis fly trap fact checked? There are phallic looking mushrooms that are being dubbed the penis fly trap. Their existence fact checked. Like, is that a real thing? Yeah. So there's some photos Mm. out there of. Some mushrooms that have been named the penis flytrap. That's fucking funny. Um, the the penis flytrap was fact checked. You are way too good at this. <laughs> yes. So. Wow! Wow! All right! All right! <laughs> so there's an image that's been floating out there of some mushrooms that look like little penises. Yeah. And. Uh, the fact checker said, oh, yes, they're real, but we don't know if they're toxic or not. So <laughs> don't stick your dick in them. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't try to. Yeah. Don't suck them off. Like, just leave them alone. And then, yeah. So the Venus flytrap story. <laughs> did, 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 600 is a lot. And, and I know if you fuck with them, they close up and it hurts the plant. Yeah. So they are naturally found in North Carolina. And removing them from public land or land held privately by another person is a felony. Felony. So they had arrest warrants issued for them. They only grow naturally within a 100 mile radius of Wilmington, North Carolina. That's wait. I didn't know that. That's insane. I didn't either. (laughs) Yeah. So poachers like to, you know, grab them and sell them and. Somebody complained to the police that they were digging for fly traps and they were stopped at a gas station and their backpacks were searched. And it said that they got 590 of them. Wow. Which is just mind boggling. Wow. So if you're in North Carolina, don't be, don't be bought, getting those Venus fly traps. Don't, don't pick a fly trap. All right. All right. Let's, uh, last one. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, gosh, you're too good at this, probably because you do this for a living. Okay. (laughs) I spend way too much time reading news. Yeah, yeah, way too much time. The first story, organ transplants cause personality changes. So people who undergo an organ transplant often have personality changes that mimic the 
person from whom that organ was received. Right. If I died and donated my heart, then that person would become a science-obsessed pothead. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That attracts. Okay. And then what's the other story? A man received a heart transplant. Okay. Married his donor's wife. And then <clears throat> died exactly the way the donor had died. What? What? Uh, probably have a heart attack, right? It's a bum ticker. Um, <laughs> no, that's no? ridiculous. That's ridiculous. The first one was fact checked. The first one. Wait, what? No. Ah! No. So the fact checked story: two men, same wife, same death. In 2024, a viral Reddit post claimed that a heart transplant recipient met his donor's widow, married her, then died by suicide in the same way as his donor. Wow. And that was that was fact checked. It was fact checked and found true? Yes, it was found to be true that he Holy shit. received the heart, went on to marry the donor's widow, and then killed himself in the exact same way the donor did. Which, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> this poor woman. It might be her that's driving these men to suicide. I, you know, maybe. I don't know. So Sonny Graham was a 69-year-old man in Georgia, fatally shot himself in 2008, 12 years after he received a heart transplant from 33-year-old Terry Cottle, who'd also fatally shot himself. Okay, so so not not making this about that poor woman that went through two uh, marital suicides, which I couldn't imagine going through one. Let's uh, let's wrap things up with something some feel good. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't know if you're aware of it, but uh, in 2023, we had what what's gearing up to be the largest single year drop in homicides across the U.S. ever. Wow. In fact, according to the FBI's most recent quarterly uniform crime report data for the quarter three of 2023, we don't have quarter four yet. But so far, with just three out of four, uh, nearly all crime in the U.S. is going down, some to pre-pandemic levels, some to multi-decade lows. Huh. This includes uh, the violent crime average, murder, rape, aggravated assault, robbery, property crime, burglary, larceny, larceny uh, all the quarterly data showing larger, the largest percentage declines ever recorded for violent crimes. Wow. Right? Because the narrative is not going that way. No. Murder is down 13.4% in cities under 100,000, and it's down 12.6% in cities with 250,000 or more. That's a lot. That's a substantial. Yeah. yeah. Detroit is on pace to have the fewest murders since 1966, and Baltimore wow. and St. Louis are on pace for the fewest murders in each of those cities in nearly a decade. That's awesome. It's really big. It's really big. There's one more quarter. So there's a lag that last quarter could of the year 2023 could have been awful and could take out all all of the, the, the gains in those first three quarters statistics. Also, apparently this data has yet to include Chicago and Los Angeles. So mm. they're also saying those are huge mm -hmm. cities that could skew mm -hmm. this data. Uh, but so far... Even even if you just say, well, outside of L.A. and Chicago, we're doing fucking great on crime. Like things are turning around. Do they do they have any reasonings or any ideas of why they think it's getting better? Yeah, I'd be interesting to find out why it's going down. Maybe we uh, harness that. I think it's because people are too poor to could go <laughs> even leave their house. Uh, that's people probably are working too many jobs. Right. <laughs> we're all too to tired. Crimes. I don't know. I'd be interested in knowing why as well. Yeah, I find human behavior to be so fascinating that, like, I'm super curious as to why there would be a decrease. I mean, it's a good thing. Certainly not uh, questioning its worth. <laughs> right. I'd just like to figure out why so we could, you know, replicate it. 
Yeah, yeah, and expand on it. It really is good. It really is good. Okay, folks, this has been such a great time, but uh, sadly, all good things do have to come to an end. It looks like we don't have any time left for the shocking secret a husband kept from his wife. She almost died when she found out. Ah! It, we don't have time for that. Sorry, that's on me. Uh, maybe maybe next time. You did go a little long. Uh, I do need to give a shout out to science, congeniality, and the social contract, making society better than anarchy for many of the last thousands of years. Uh, any final words, thoughts, or goodbyes before we go, Amber? Yes. Wear a condom and stay away from phallic mushrooms. Uh, and don't even put a condom on the phallic mushroom. Just stay away from them. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't even. Just, just don't. <laughs> don't go there. Oh, I have a wonderful day, folks. <laughs> if you had a good time with us today, you know what to do. Tell someone that needs us. Uh, you can find us over at halfcocktails.com. We're on TikTok, YouTube, and and Facebook. Uh, if you're in a giving mood, come see our gift shop uh, at the website, uh, or you can find us over on Patreon. We'll have all those li links in the episode description. Thanks for stopping by, and go out and be well. Live long and prosper. Now things are ending, it's time to go. No more to get through, thanks for listening, that's our show. Ain't affectation, oh, we're just leaving you half gone. Have we had a good time talking today, but even best times eventually they fade away. Ain't adjuration, oh, we're just leaving half cut.